morning as we go to the Chitas of today. Today is Thursday. And we are holding in the Chumash on chapter 13. Chapter 13, verse number 29. We are holding in the portion of um, of uh, Tazria, all the laws of leprosy that are brought in the Taita. This is a spiritual leprosy, self-understood, which deals with the uh, with the uh, laws of Tzedas, which makes a person impure, and he needs to be confined, as we'll con- so the Taita will continue with the, these laws. So the Taita now Taita introduces us to now another kind of Tzedas, Verse 29, the Yish, a Yisha, a man or a woman, if he'll have a lesion in his head, on his head, or on, in his beard. And uh, Rashi says, scripture comes to, the trader comes to distinguish between a lesion that uh, we hear grows and a lesion in a place where a flesh, like your hands, namely, that in one case, in the case of the flesh, the sign of uncleanliness is white hair. While in the case of, in the area of hair, the sign of uncleanliness is golden yellow hair. Verse number two. Okay, so the Kaya will look at the lesion and will behold its appearance is deeper than the skin. Uba se sohub duck. And in it is a thin golden yellow hair. The Timeh Isakayan, the Kayan will make him impure. Nesekhu, it is a Nesek. That's, that's the, as Rashi says, that is the name of this Tsaras. Tsaras Harish, it is a Tsaras in the head. It's a Tsaras, it's a Tsaras in the beard. Now she says the bright sun should never have a shocker. Should be lit up. The black hair is turned to golden yellow. Nesiku, this is the name of the reason. Should ask when it occurs on the area of skin where the hair grows. Verse thirty-one. The hechira kainas a nega when the kaya will see this nega, this lesion. A nesik, the nega of the nesik. And behold, the appearance is not deeper than the skin. And there's no black hair in it. So the Koyim will lock this guy up or will quarantine him for seven days because he's not sure exactly. Thus we learn, now she says, if there are black hair inside, he is clean. And not require quarantine. If he has black hair, then it's not there's no it's not considered a negatzadas. This is not a tzadas. For black hair in a nesek is a sign of cleanliness. Again, it might be a dermatologist's problem, but not a problem for the koyhain. As the verse says, if black hair has grown in it, the nesek is healed and is clean. The Raka in under verse 32, Raka is a nega, the Goyen will look at this nega by Yemashvi on the seventh day. Meaning, like Fosaha Nesek, the Nesek has not spread. Veloyoyabarshay itself, and there's no yellow golden hair in it. Umara Nesek ain't on McMurray. And it's not, the, 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 it's not deeper. The Nesek is not as white, it's, it's, it's more uh, darkish. So therefore, it's not deep in the skin. Again, a nesek in the tail is something that, that is deeper. The, 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 the scab is deeper than the than this skin. And it has a different color of hearing, of ear, I mean, of ear, of, of hair. And also that it, that it spreads. And in the pasa, thus if the nesek did, did spread, or it had golden hair in it, then it's unclean. So we know that basically we understand that we we'll keep on learning this to learn to teach us what is the law of a nesik, what makes it truly a nesik, a, a tzaras. I mean, verse thirty-three. 
is galech. That's a nechzek leigalos. So when he do it in this place, he shall shave himself. He covered cuts off all the hair around this this nesik. because he's not still sure. The his gakes a nechzek nesek shevis yom shenis, and the koyon should quarantine him for another seven days. Now she says he shall shave himself. He has a we talk about his beard or his head of hair. He shaves himself around the nesek. And as a layer layer, he shall leave two hairs close to it all around in order that any spread of the nesek will be discernible. So that if it spreads, it will pass the hair and go to the shaven area. And the Kayan then will see this nesek, this lesion on the seventh day. Meaning, if, the, if it still did not spread, but in the in the in the in the flesh, umara nesa enen amik bered, and it hasn't deepened its shade. Tir a koyin, the koyin will make him tar. Mechibes begodav, he immerses his garments. The tar goes to the mikvah, and he is pure. Verse thirty-five. The fasa tisi yifsa nesa bered. But if the nest spreads in the skin, after he was declared tar, as she says, from here we know that only know that only that the lesion is pronounced unclean if it spreads after dismissal, after he's been purified. How do we know that it is clean if it spreads at the end of the first week of quarantine? Or at the end of the second week of quarantine, because the scripture uses a double expression, pasa yifse. It spreads, it spreads. Donating that he's unclean if it spreads in any case. So a spreading of a nesek, a spreading of, uh, of this lesion is a alt, is a one of the most clear signs of impurity. Verse 36, the Kayan will see them. Behold, the Nesek has spread in the skin. He doesn't have to even check it anymore. Let's say to see, not to examine. He doesn't have to examine the spreading of this Nesek. It is unclean. That's one of the clear signs of a of a of a tzaras, of this kind of a tzaras, this kind of a leprosy. Verse 37. But if the nesek does not, if this nesek, if this scab or whatever you want to call it, does not does not uh, grow, or black hair has grown in it, actually it got the, the hair became no, no didn't lighten up. In, so the Nesek is beginning to heal. He is pure. The Koyin will say he is not a Matsaida. Main thing is he's not going to be called a Matsaida. He doesn't want to be called a Matsaida. Because we haven't yet learned the laws of Matsaida yet. But these are all laws of how he becomes a Matsaida. Becoming a leper in the Torah, as you'll learn next week, actually, Pasha's Mitzayda. Now, if a guy becomes a Mitzayda, is a whole different, the whole law, what happens to him. So nobody wants to become a, uh, a Mitzayda. And therefore, that's, that's why the Kayin is important over here, because the Kayin, who had Abbas Yisrael, uh, wouldn't want to make a person a Mitzayda just to make him a Mitzayda, because there's a lot uh, he has to do if he becomes a Mitzayda. So Rashi says we do not know that even yellow or red hair, which are not golden hair. But scripture says shach, we say shach, black hair. But by here meaning it, or if black hair, instead of using the, the expected oi, or the teta uses the, the over here the teta uses the vav, an exclusion item which comes to include yellow or red hair, in a nesek as a sign of cleanliness, just like black here. Um, the word sav means resembling the appearance of gold. 
Zav is the same word as Zav, golden. Golden hair. We're looking for golden hair in a beard or the or their head hair. Tar hu tidakrain. But he a, an unclean person who the Kayan pronounced clean is not clean. So we have to make sure he's tar, tar in general. But he 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 he, he doesn't he, he calls him tar from this concept of tzedas. Yisha ki verse thirty-eight. Yisha yisha ki A man or a woman has spots on his skin or on their flesh, white spots. Spots. The kain, the kain will either come to the kain. The hine bear besadam behades, behades case, and he looks at it and behold, there are dim white spots on the skin of the flesh. Baku is a pigmentation that has, that has spread in the skin. Tar who he is clean. He's not a matsuda. Now she says, dim white, their whiteness is not bright, but dim. So it's not deep. Bak, like the whiteness that appears on the flesh of a red man called Ross. Between the areas of his redness, flesh color. The white pigmentation is called bahak, just like a freckled man who seems be, whose skin becomes one be, between one freckles uh, and another shines brightly, mavic, with pure whiteness. So we hear it's the other way. It's the freckles are white, not dark freckles, but white freckles. But this is not a sign of tzadas, white freckles. The Kayin tells him, go home. You got nothing to do with tzadas. You are a pure person. has nothing to do with the law of tzadas. And that completes the Chumash of today. Now, the Rebbe has explained to us yesterday in the beautiful Tanya, now the Rebbe explained to us mainly the souls of the world of Bria, and the souls of the world of Yitzira, which the Alter Rebbe called Ganeiden Hatachten and Ganeiden Elyon. There's the upper level of Ganeiden, which is Ganeiden of the world of Bria, where the Ganeiden of Tzadikim reside. Generally, Tzadikim reside, righteous people who serve God in their lifetime with great understanding, with great meditation and contemplation. And they had great joy in their intellectual. That was their life, the life of learning Torah. As the Gemara would sometimes call the, the Tanoim, Teirosim Um Nasam. Their Torah was their profession. The learning of Torah was their profession. And they learned Torah and they brought in their mind and they chose to love God. They chose to learn Torah. And automatically had a had an intellectual free choice of love of God. And then you had the world of Etzira, which most of the Sam and the Shamas go to. The world of formation, which is the world of emotions. And there is not so much intellect. It's the world that it's a world that comes when we have a, a natural love of God. But now the Alter Rebbe says there are some tzaddikim who reach up to the world of Atzilus. There are some tzaddikim who reach, reach up to the world of, of emanation. Their souls reach up to a Ganadin that's even higher than the world of Bria. Who are those tzaddikim that reach up to the world of emanation? The oil of Atzilus. So the world of Atzilus, the world of emanation. The world of emanation is a world that's higher than understanding of created beings intellectually. That's why the world of creation mentioned, we mentioned last, last yesterday, that the world of creation is where Chachma really is the parts of the, the face of wisdom. So what is in the world of, cre of, of emanation, the world of Atzilus? There is higher than wisdom, even. That world, Chachma, Bin, and Das, 
are united so so strong with with God that they're in their perfect unity there. You don't even see it. You see the ain't safe. You see ain't safe. Be yichud atzum v'nifla in a profound and wondrous unity. Be yes as says. Be yes it is in a superior unity, infinitely superior to the unity found in the world of Bria. So even though Bria in the world of creation, there's the there's the revelation of wisdom, which is the wisdom of God. Which the wisdom of God brings about bittel, it brings about self, it brings about self nullification. But still, it's a it's a midah, it's a concept, it's a concept, not a midah, it's a concept of intelligence, which is chachma. In the world of Atzilus, is so connected with Eid and Seif that you don't even see the concept of chachma even there. You don't see the concept of chachma. You don't see the concept of bina. It's totally given over to God. For there in the world of, 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 of Bria, they descended to illuminate only to a restricted degree. The Chabad of Atzilus, referred to as Chabad of Atzilus, radiates in Bria only after the light has been contracted. But in Eilam Atzilus, the light is so strong that there's, no, there's almost like no contraction there. Why did, was the light contracted in Olam Habriya, in the world of creation? Because the the Abishta wanted that in Olam Habriya, which is the the abode of most sadikim, most righteous people, they'll be able to see their reward of the wisdom of to, to bask in the glory of God. But it's ultimately all to the wisdom that they comprehended in this world. Lay this Hashem to know God, and they should have some kind of a knowledge, some comprehension in the infinite light of God. But still, it's limited. It's limited. It's still limited. Because it's ultimately all connected to the capacity of their mind. Because the, the ultimate, we are all we are all limited. So therefore, the, therefore, even in Ganadin, even as the souls of the world of Bria, it's great Sadiqim that in the world of Bria, their souls also cannot 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 cannot, cannot receive a light that's higher, a revelation that's higher than the capacity of their soul, of their the, what they learned in this world. Because if not, to achieve this purpose, the contraction of Chabad of Atzilus was necessary, lest they, the created beings of Bria, dissolve out of existence. They would also lose their existence if Atzilus was revealed in Bria without a, without a contraction. Then the then the, the, the shamas of the world of Bria would disappear, dissolve out of existence, unless they furthermore cease altogether to exist as created beings, reverted instead to the source and root, namely to God itself. And the Abisha didn't want that. You see, God doesn't want that in this world we should lose our existence. And so too, God doesn't want the neshama to lose its existence in the upper worlds too. So the Abishta wants that every neshama, a neshama in the body, should not lose its existence, like the sons of Aaron. They should have an existence in this world. And even as the neshama goes lamaila, they should continue to exist. How does the neshama lamaila continue to exist? Is by even the revelation that it receives, Lamaila above is also contracted. So, therefore, for the souls of the world of Bria, the world of creation, to be able to receive their reward or their glory, or mitzvah, mitzvah, the reward of a mitzvah is a mitzvah. It needs the, the world of Atzillus, the earth, the light of the world of Atzillus to come into the world of creation needs to be contracted. 
So we're Chabad of Atzilus to shine forth in Bria without contracting, allowing the, 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 the souls of Bria to grasp Godness as it radiates from the, from the spheres of Atzilus. These souls would be overwhelmed by the godly illumination beyond their capacity to absorb and would dissolve out of existence. What means out of existence? Means that not they would disappear, they would become part of its godliness. My friend, that completes the Tanya of the day. We haven't yet finished the subject because there are the Alter Rebbe didn't explain to us what about the soul of Atzilus. But there are tzaddikim that there are certain tzaddikim that reach up to the level of the world of Atzilus. So the tzaddikim that are, have the capability to reach up to the world of Atzilus. And we're going to learn that Lamaila means above. That completes the Tanya of today. Today is the 28th day of the month, which start with the Tilim of the day is chapter 135, 136, 137, 138, and 139. So 135 to 139, and you would have done the chitas of the day. I invite you to two wonderful things that are happening today. At 10 o'clock, we are having a class in the portion of the week at 10 a.m., either at Chabad or on Zoom or on Torah Direct. And tonight at 7.30, we are having a musical experience, a Pesach musical experience with a very famous singer in Chazan, all the way from South Africa and through England, Yudi Cohen, a uh, brother of uh, Huni Cohen, is going to give us a beautiful place of experience through song and uh, an understanding of the Haggadah. He's really put together a wonderful program. And I hope to see you all there tonight at 7.30 for this wonderful evening of musical music and song of in the Haggadah that we all are going to be coming to say very soon on Pesach. I wish you all a wonderful and beautiful day. See you in Shem tomorrow at 8 o'clock, which will continue to learn the Chitas of the day.